Hey everyone, Mike Carey with Northwest Fishing Reports. I'm fishing with uh, my friend Robbie. We're on Lake Chelan today and we're trying out my new iTrawl from iFish Solutions. It's a great uh, new tool for anglers. Uh, you can control the throttle of your trolling motor from the front of the boat with a remote. Lots of really cool features. And uh, I'm in hunt mode right now. Just hooked into a fish as the motor throttled up and then down um, and bam triggered the fish and here he comes we're gonna have to hoist this one since uh, Robbie's filming so forgive the bad form here ah well that's what happens when you try to hoist the fish let's see how easy it is to set up the eye troll Here's Alan Hanna of iFish Solutions. Good morning, Alan with iFish Solutions. And we're here at Mike's house to put on the eye troll onto his boat. And so we've got a box here with all the pieces and components. So we'll open up that box and we'll see what you get. Here's the box as it comes from iTroll when you order it. So here would be the G2 master control unit that runs all of it. This would have the throttle control actuator. This is the power module, and then the various wiring and pieces. Also in the box is the fit kit for uh, the individual motors, and so we do have uh, an application for each of the trolling motors out there. We're going to put the iTroll on Mike's motor, which is a 9.9 Mercury, and uh, so you will see that, but the installation is similar on the Yamahas and other motors. So basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to be installing a throttle actuator that will basically pull that throttle automatically. Pretty basic tools. Really we need a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of needle noses is good, and a pair of just side cutters or dikes. Those are the basic things and then as we get into this, if we need something else, we'll get it out. But this will cover most of it. So there are very good instructions included along with pictures in the box that comes but this is the servo that actuates the throttle. This is the bracket that the servo mounts on. And then this is the little arm that actuates that. So we're going to assemble that first. If you look closely on the servo, you'll see there's a little tab right here. And there's one on the other side in the same place. We need to remove those so the servo will bolt down flat on the bracket. One of the things that's important to do is to mark your linkage where it was actually bolted to the motor. So I'm just going to take a Sharpie and I'm just going to put a mark right there so I can see where that linkage was actually installed. See it right there, the mark? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the servo onto the motor. And it just mounts under one bolt. There are clear pictures that show it, but basically it's going to be under this bolt right here. So if I loosen it up, there we go then we can take and we can place the servo underneath this bolt. And I'll show you that. And then it goes right back here and we bolt this down in this position. This is the throttle actuator cable that comes from the servo motor in the iTroll package and so we're going to show you how to install that at this point in time. All we have to do is take our cable and then if we look over here on the side of the motor where our throttle and we made that mark on the throttle arm now what we have to do is take the screw loose one of the things that I'm going to stop right here and do because it's so easy to lose the screw inside the cowling where it's impossible to get let's grab a rag bike and put in here so I can't lose that screw I think an ounce prevention is worth many pounds of cure and so if we just take and set something here so that we maybe minimize the possibility, why not, right? Mike has brought us this beautiful red plaid rag. Now that's really high class, Mike. And so what that's going to do is keep us from losing that screw down inside the motor where we can't find it. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to get this screw out. There we go, and I don't know if you can see that in the picture, but we've removed it from the throttle arm. And by marking this arm where it went, we'll now know where to put it all back. Then what we do is take that screw, and we go right through the cable. 
and you can kind of see it in the cable and then we're going to put it back in there. The trick is with these old fat fingers is to get it back in there. What we're going to do then is we're going to take our throttle arm where we marked it and put it right back where it was and snug it down. Don't have to break it off. Now you can see this cable is free to pull the throttle. So this is the servo right here. So what we want to do is, is we want to connect the servo to our temporary wire we have brought back from up at the power supply. So here it is here, you can see it. And then what we're going to do, you can see you've got copper showing right there, connector, and then you've got connector pins there. If you roll those down face to face, and you can connect it. Then what I'm going to do, I brought our control up here and so by having the control back here now, now I can run this all and make sure that it works. And so what I can do is, is we want to be sure that the servo rotates in the clockwise direction. I've taken the little screw out of it. And so here's the actuator arm. And so what I will do is, is I will turn on and you just press and release. And now the eye troll is on. And then you want to run your you want to run your throttle to zero. So you'll see that it says zero throttle there. And then you can just set this on there. But now I can run it and I can see that indeed it does turn clockwise. So we want to be sure that it turns clockwise. So that's that's what that's doing, is it is it's making sure that it turns clockwise. So I want to go to idle, which is clear down there at zero. And then once I'm at idle, now what I can do is I can set up this arm because that arm is held in position by power from the controller. So you can actually move this arm when it's not powered, but right now you can see it's locked in position. So that's how I want to then set up this linkage. So here you can see the linkage for the Mercury. and. Uh, so that's free now to move the throttle by the servo and always in our applications the stock throttle all still works so here I'm moving it with the stock throttle now I come back to neutral uh, back to no throttle on and you can see now I'm free to move it with the iTroll servo so that's what this little piece of linkage right here does so what we're going to do now is, is we're going to set this arm set the cable in the arm with just a very slight amount of slack and then this will all be set up on this end. Now if we look at the eye troll, it's on and so if I just start moving that you can see that it now has a very nice fine progressive linear actuation so basically the throttle is now following my fingertips here. The throttle that's the factory throttle will still completely work. So if we look back here, now I can move the factory throttle and it's all still working just like it always did. And you can see it, see what's happening there. So the factory throttle all still works and, and yet the iTroll works too. Now the thing to remember is, is when the iTroll is up at some percentage of throttle, if you try to back this throttle back here off, it won't back off because the iTrol has control of it. Then if I just hit the idle run button, it will immediately drop back to idle. And so now this motor is setting at idle and I can certainly do everything from right here on my other throttle if I want to. Before the next step of our operation, we need to bring the throttle actuator cable into the outboard. And so we have to mount the power module up by the battery and then this is going to come back through to the motor so you'll have to figure out what the best way to string that is. We've hooked up the motor and now we're ready to work on the inside of the boat. So we have the cable that runs to the front of the boat and this cable is what provides a connection for the iTroll control head. It has a sealed end on it so if you want to take the control head out you certainly may and put the sealed cap back on it. Also this is a bulkhead fitting so if you wanted to run this fitting through the dash and then plug the control head on, you could also do that. 
What we're going to do when we string this wire is, is we're going to take the cord out from this end. We'll show you that in a minute. But what that does is that lets us string the cord to the front without having this big connection fitting in the way. Here we are sitting out in the sun at Mike's house. It's just way too nice to be doing anything other than fishing. But we're trying to get ready to go fishing. So here is the power pack for the iTroll right here. And it has a positive wire, a 5 amp standard fuse, and a negative wire. And these are all sized just to go on your battery. So that's what we're going to do in this particular case. They could also be set up to go on your, your bus or wherever you wanted to put them. But in this case, it's made to be wired back here at the battery so we're close to the kicker motor. So what we've done here is, is we've installed the iTroll power module. We've hooked it to the positive and negative of the battery. And then right on top of the battery, you can see the fuse holder is right there. The next step then is to just bring the wires out over the top before I run them through the gunnels or anywhere and hook them up out on the kicker so we can actually run the throttle control and just be sure everything works. Mike took the privilege of drilling the first hole in his boat. There it is right there. You can see it. We siliconed that. Then we'll put one of those stainless clamshells over the top. That'll be finished. Then we just followed his gas line out through here. There's a grommet in the motor right here, so we came through that grommet, just traveled around. Here's the servo wire coming here. Here's the connector up here. Got to make sure you're out of the way of all moving parts because there's a belt back in here that moves. You got to make sure it can't get in there. And there it is. Now we're going to get the cable all the way to the front of the boat for the iTroll control head, and we will be done with this project. Time to go fishing. Alright, Alan, got our first afternoon fish here on Lake Samish. I thought I saw my other rod going off too, Mike, but it's not on there. Hey man, Go right in up. between the rods. Right in between the rods, right there. That's a nice fish, oh my goodness. Wow. That's a, that's a cutthroat, I think. Yeah. Got him. Hi everyone, we're out here today fishing with Alan Hanna of iFish Solution. We're using the iTroll and uh, we have the unit set in hunt mode. But first off, before we get into that, what is an iTroll? So what an iTroll is, is a precision speed control system for your kicker. And so you can very precisely adjust your trolling speed. Plus it has hunt program in it that's an option. And that lets it automatically vary the speed. So we can get all the different lures we're running today at their optimum speeds throughout the, the speed spectrum. And of note, everyone knows that changing your trolling speed can impact fish biting or not. And uh, the difficulty lies in remembering to do that. When you're fishing, you tend to get lazy trolling hour after hour. So the iTroll does that for you. It does that for us. So basically what we've done today is figured out, this is the first time out in this boat with the iTroll on it. So what we've done is tried to figure out what percentage of throttle gives what speed so we kind of know where to set the minimums and the maximums. So we're playing with our unit today, getting used to it, getting used to it on this boat. And um, we'll see if we can't get a few of these uh, finicky kokanee to bite. Check out iFishSolutions.com for more information and to order your iTroll today.